Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nico Spiriel. And before we get on with the video, I'd like to announce that we're doing a giveaway sponsored by Chaos. We will be giving away one uh, V-Ray license, a commercial license for 3ds Max for one year. And we will pick two winners as well to win some Chaos merchandise. Um, the winners will be contacted directly and the contest will end on next Friday, the 15th of July at 12 p.m. CET. All you have to do is answer this question. Which axis of the Nmesh modifier gizmo is up or outwards of your object? Is it X, Y or Z? Uh, leave a comment with your answer and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can get more um, get a chance to get into more giveaways and tutorials and so on. Also, you should actually visit the Chaos TV YouTube channel uh, for updates, tutorials, show reels, everything regarding Chaos products in general. Um, I've also left this information in the description. So, you know, have a look through the video, check the description, enter the contest, remember to leave your comment and let's get on with the video. Today, we're going to look at the V-Ray Enmesh modifier. So let's just start over here. And I have in this in instance, I have a plane and a simple cylinder. And I want to distribute the cylinder over this plane with the V-Ray in mesh. So I go into my uh, modifier list and I find the V-Ray in mesh modifier. I can add objects that I want to distribute. And then I need to render in order to see the result of what we're doing. So in this case, and also you can obviously use, um, let's see here, you can use the uh, IPR, that'll work as well. So what we're seeing here is the cylinder getting tiled onto the, um, onto the plane itself using this crop box. So the crop box, when we're selecting the object, um, chooses what we're actually um, duplicating or instancing on the object. So if I make this crop box uh, smaller, we can see that it'll only take part of our object. So we need to have this actually within the size of our cylinder. Cylinder. If I, or the source object in this case, if we um, increase the size of the box, there will be a gap before the next tiling happens. So in this case, because my crop box is larger than the cylinder itself seen from above, um, we will have a gap until the next one. So we can increase um, that gap as, as we wish, basically. We can increase and decrease the number of tiling depending on what kind of results we want um, in the tiling U and V. Remember, this uses the UVW mapping of the actual plane in this case. Um, so we need to have UV uh, map coordinates in order for this to actually work. Um, the height percentage is the height percentage of the source object itself. So if that's set to 50%, we will only see half of the height of the cylinder. Um, we can also change this to 200% if we want to increase that scale. And the height offset percentage is where the object is uh, the source object is uh, is placed on the plane that we're distributing it onto. So in this case, default value is 50%. So the cylinder goes 50% above and 50% below the surface of the original plane. So if this is set to zero, they will be, be under our plane. If it's set to 100, they will be going outwards off the plane itself and then distributing from there. Um, the use mesh UV mapping uh, option, which is off by default, it tells V-Ray to use um, the source mesh UV, uh, UVW for shading instead of the surface UVW. So normally when we're going to texture this, or if we're going to texture this, it would use, V-Ray would use the UV mapping coordinates of the plane to in order to fix on how our texture surface on each of these cylinders would be afterwards. So if we wanted to control that via a UV map modifier on the source object, we would need to enable this. Um, the use mesh IDs uh, is on by default and uses the IDs for shading the, uh, the patternized surface if a V-Ray multi-sub text or multi-sub object are used, for example. Um, so usually you would probably keep this on. 
we can change the rotation offset and uh, on U and V um, to enable um, if we need to change how our pattern um, comes up and everything. We can do use random offset on uh, U and V. This is a value between zero and one. Uh, same goes for V, obviously. So this is a, a random option. Uh, we can use random rotation in steps and we can rotate our object randomly in whatever direction we want to and sorry this won't uh, actually work uh, because of how um, that we're just using a cylinder in this case so um, one thing to be aware of is how our gizmo the crop box itself is placed upon our source object so depending on how you modeled your source object in this case it's just this random cylinder um, but we want to make sure that z uh, of the crop box always points up because that would be what goes outwards um, in regards of the mesh normal of our actually object that we're distributing everything on so if by any case uh, by any chance your uh, object was rotated internally uh, on a sub level you would get a um, an option where your crop box would have defaulted to something like this instead um, and look like this and that would mean that our <laughs> our object would would be turning on the on on an axis with that we didn't intend to so we need to make sure that our z value which you can see here needs to be the one pointing up and down so in this case i would need to rotate my gizmo and then i would need to make sure that we're within the actual size of that and then resize the y value and then this should all work out so these are some of the things that you need to um, take a little bit care of um, one of the things that you can do actually with this which is pretty neat is if we create a simple texture i'm just going to use a v-ray color um, to showcase this so if we take a color into the um, object itself we can use something like the v-ray multi-sub texture um, if we use the V-Ray multi-sub texture, we need to explain to it how to randomize between textures. You can also use the UV uh, W randomizer from V-Ray. In this case, I'm just going to take this to one slot. Um, but I can now go into randomize so it gets random IDs and I can use um, instance IDs because of how the enmesh modifier works. So if I do this and I change my gamma value, we can now see that I am randomly putting on a gamma of 10 of this color on every single object of every instance. Obviously, if you have a larger patch that you're distributing through your um, V-Ray and mesh for something like Rattan, or a, a weave for a basket weave or something like that where this I can see this um, um, sort of this uh, modifier being a really cool tool uh, you might want to be a little bit careful of doing something like this because you would change every every time you tile and not every individual um, um, element within the source object itself so I can showcase this in a, in a second so okay, this kind of explains the basics of how the enmesh modifier works. Now, if we go in and show a little example that I created earlier, we can take this patch here, and this is just a normal, you know, model pattern that repeats itself um, in a tileable fashion, just like any mesh would do. But I can actually point that into an object like this sofa which comes out of the um, Cosmos uh, browser so it's a you know a free model if you have V-Ray um, and then we apply the enmesh modifier to just the um, mesh around it so so the pillows are their own they're original from Cosmos and everything but I just applied the enmesh modifier to uh, the actual structure of this sofa so what this gives us is that if we open the VFB here and press uh, render, um, we can now 
distribute this pattern through our Enmesh modifier and create this kind of basket weave kind of thing all the way around this sofa as if it was like an outdoor kind of sofa or whatever. Um, we might want to change, you know, the tiling itself on how many times we tile it. Uh, the larger the number, the smaller, the, the more distributions we're getting. So if we set this to 100 times 100, we will get this very, very close weave. Um, but the cool thing is that we can, you know, we can get close to it. It's, it's actual 3D. So we're not using a displacement map or anything. We're basically just using our um, mesh to duplicate it out via the UV mapping. So it's a really cool little feature. Um, another quick thing I used to do was I created this pattern here, which is a few toruses that have been set up in a fashion so that they tile. Um, and again, I just tiled this around with the Enmesh modifier. And in this case, I'm using a plane with a noise modifier, uh, some bend and so on. Um, and then I have multiple of them, and then I'm distributing a tiling of 35 on each of these, and then they're offset a little bit to each other. Um, and this gives us a really interesting uh, result where we can use this for a chain mail, for example. So if you have fabric of any sort um, and you need to have clothing, in this case it's chain mail, but you know, it's, it's a cool way of actually getting a very complex uh, geometrically shape. This takes quite a while to render, but that's mostly because we're using a material uh, which has like um, metal uh, material and so on. So if I change the materials of all of these um, four planes here, we can get a lot faster result. Obviously, because of you know we're not we're not calculating all the um, reflections and everything going on. And we're getting all of these uh, cool little um, results based of it. So we can, you know, get as close as we want. Basically, we can change around in the settings if we wanted to have, you know, a higher height percentage or if we wanted to uh, do something else. So it's a really cool um, feature in V-Ray 6. And I'm actually very curious as to how you guys would use something like this and what you could come up with creating on uh, with something like this. So um, yeah, but that's it for now. And I will see you later. Okay, bye.